Alright, in today's video, I'm going to be continuing on with my series, The Secret Rapture, but this time I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on the trumpets and the voice of God. And hopefully by the end of this video, I can tie everything up with a nice little bow. So what I just want to start off with is Acts 17.11. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. This is what I want you to do as well after you're done watching this video. Take the scriptures that I am going to give you in this video and go study them for yourself. Don't take everything that I say as 100% gospel. But do your research, do your due diligence, and see what you come up with. So we'll just start. I want to start in Genesis. And then we're going to get into some of the more controversial verses in Thessalonia, or Thessalonians. And then also in, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians as well. And we're going to talk about uh, the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> so let's begin in Genesis though. Genesis 3 verse 8. This is after Adam and Eve took of the forbidden fruit. And this is what happens next. So, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden but the lord called the man and said to him where are you and he said i heard the voice of you in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself now in other versions of the story uh in the esv version the niv version all this they basically say and i heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In the King James, it says, I heard the voice. So that's kind of interesting in itself that they're both correlating. Because when you think about it, God is actually walking through the garden. One version says, I heard the voice of you walking in the garden. Another version says, I heard the sound. This is important. So let's just go into Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush, this is Moses, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord God saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the Lord. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Let's go over to John chapter 18, verse 4. This is after Jesus' betrayal, immediately after when Judas betrayed him and all the soldiers are there. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. In the Jewish Bible, it says, I am, and they fell back to the ground. So as soon as Jesus said, I am, the soldiers all fell backwards to the ground. So that is the voice of Jesus. So remember this, I'm, I'm going to tie this all together. 
it's very important to know that whenever God speaks, people tremble. Whenever Jesus commanded authority, people were like, wow, this guy speaks like no other man. He has authority. Where did this authority come from? All this kind of stuff. People are asking those questions. And it's all on your tonality. And I'll make another video about that. But basically, I want you to get the concept that whenever God speaks, people tremble at his voice. They tremble. There's fear. And when Jesus speaks, the soldiers fell backwards. That doesn't normally happen. Revelation 1.10. This is John speaking about his vision that he had. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. And this is Jesus. So again, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, very important, Revelation 4, 1. After this, I looked down and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the voice which I had heard speaking to me, like a trumpet, said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Matthew 6, 2. Now we're going to get into a little bit more of analogies of speaking like a trumpet or sounding like a trumpet and then i'm going to tie this in with uh, the book of thessalonians the book of corinthians and also revelation matthew 6 2 thus this is jesus speaking when you give to the needy sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. He's using this as an example. Don't be that person that is like shouting off the rooftops. In this example, he says, sound no trumpet. It's not literal. There are people doing that, blowing trumpets and saying, hear ye, hear ye, I am giving to the poor. But it is like that. And that's important for you to understand that there's an analogy between using a trumpet, a physical trumpet, and then also related to how we speak, our voice, the command that we have. So if you can tie those two together, it will help you understand other verses. Hebrews 12, verse 18. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing. This is um, the author's talking. This could be Paul. A lot of people think that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. He's talking about when Moses had the people come to Mount Sinai and God was coming down to speak to them and they were so fearful. So listen to Hebrews, or listen to me read Hebrews 12, 18. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. And Moses also said, I tremble with fear. So they're begging Moses, don't let God speak to us. Please, it's too much for us. His voice is too much for us. Exodus twenty eighteen. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper. Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled and they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. So it's interesting that in Exodus twenty eighteen, you see, now, when all the people saw the thunder and the flash of lightning and the sound of the trumpet, nobody's blowing a trumpet. There's nobody physically blowing a trumpet. This is the trumpet of God. And I think when God speaks, especially back then to the Israelites, his voice was so commanding that it was like a shofar. It was like a trumpet. 
because obviously they didn't have the metal trumpets back then. They used shofars to represent God commanding the nation to move, to stay put, to sound the alarm when armies are coming, all this kind of stuff. So in this instance, when God is coming down from the mountain to speak to the Israelites, they're like, we can't handle this. We can't handle God speaking to us. We will die. Very important. Hopefully you're getting an analogy now between a commanding voice and a trumpet. Exodus 19 uh, verse 13, no hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. This is regards to touching the mountain. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So this is God saying when the trumpet blasts, his trumpet, the trumpet of God. I might have to make this into a part two because I may run out of video. But hopefully you're getting getting this when I'm trying to um, communicate to you that when we get to Thess, uh, the book of Thessalonians and when Paul is talking about the last trumpet, we're going to tie that in with God's voice, the Jesus' voice, basically the, the trumpet of God. So Isaiah 58, 1, cry aloud, this is an analogy, Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression to the house of Jacob, their sins. So this is in Isaiah. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Zechariah 9, 14. Then the Lord will appear over them and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord will sound the trumpet and will march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. This is the God. This is the trumpet of God. Again, Exodus 19, verse 16. So it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and lightning and flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sounded. And a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled now we're going to get to first corinthians 15 51 behold this is paul i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed the last trumpet trumpet of god first thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive will remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. It's important. And with the sound of the trumpet of God. This is what I've been reading to you. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Now let's go to Revelations. Let's talk about the seventh trumpet and how that's different than this verse in Thessalonians and also in uh, 1 Corinthians. The seventh trumpet is different. Revelations 11.15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has come the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give thanks to you, Lord Almighty, who is and who was. For you have taken your great power and began to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came and the time for the dead to be judged and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There was flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, reminds you of Exodus, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavenly hail. And then it goes on to 
chapter 12. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Like, this is totally different than 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. This is different. Paul is using this to comfort people, to say, look, this is a mystery. When Jesus comes back to get us, the Christians that believe in Jesus, and those that die in Jesus, that know him and, and are asleep, we will go to meet the Lord up in the air, and he's going to catch us away. That's what this is saying. This is totally different than what's happening in the book of revelations book of revelation and the book of revelation is specifically for the jews for israel so that's important as well and i can dive into that in another video but i just wanted to, you to get the concept that there are variations of trumpet blasts some are the trumpet of god some are people sounding like the voice or with their voices sounding like a trumpet and an angel blowing a trumpet. Totally different. Totally different. So that's it for this video. If you like this type of thing, let me know in the comments. I know it's a little bit long, but hopefully you get it. Hopefully you have hope at the end of this. Because this is what Paul was talking about. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.